Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a non-limited edition Stamp Timber video. <laughs> this video uses the Black Eyed Susans stamp set that Simon released at the beginning of this month, so it's part of the regular collection, will be restocked, etc. And I love it. I showed it in the uh, Stamp Timber release and review video that I posted on the 1st. And it's been sitting here just waiting to be inked up and finally got a chance to. So I have some Strathmore watercolor paper and I put it in my Misty and I use my anti-static powder tool. And then I'm inking up this stamp with VersaFine Claire Fallen Leaves ink. Just something I like to do with like sort of fall themed cards. It's just a little bit more subtle than using the Nocturne. So I ink this up and I stamp it multiple times. It's a big stamp. There's lots of surface area, plus this watercolor paper, like all watercolor paper, unless it's hot press, that's a whole other thing, um, has some texture to it. So like I said, this stamp is big. This piece of cardstock right now, or this watercolor paper is like four and a half by six inches, just to give you an idea, like the stamp set is big. It's a big six by eight set and I love it. So. You do not need to heat emboss when using the Karen Brushmarker Pros, which is what I'll be using. I just, like I said in a previous video, it's like my security blanket. I like having my images heat embossed. It keeps things a little more contained, <laughs> makes my life easier. This time I'm embossing with WOW's Clear Matte Dull Embossing Powder. So it gives me the raised edge, but this embossing powder has a dull finish to it. So it's not shiny and reflective like regular clear embossing powder. Just personal preference. I switch between this and regular clear all the time. But yeah, today I was like, hmm, let's just do it with the clear matte doll. So I heat embossed it. And then I rem remembered to stamp the bees from the set because I love them. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I love bees. So I stamped them. Same thing. Antiseptic powder tool. Stamp them. Heat emboss them with that clear matte doll embossing powder. And then I'm using my Karen Brush Marker Pros. And very simple watercoloring. I've sped this up in editing again, but even then it's very simple. For all of the petals, I'm just using um, yellow and red because that'll give me like a nice orange tone, you know, that deepens into that red right at the base of each of the petals. And I just scribble the marker on and then I pull out the colors and mix them together with my little water brush. This is the Tim Holtz Detailer water brush. And I have, I, this is the same one I've had for, I forget now how many years. I love this little water brush. And again, it depends on my mood and what I'm doing, whether I use like a regular paintbrush dipped in water. I find when I'm working with the Brush Marker Pros and this watercolor paper that my little water brush just works. And off to the side, like off camera, I do have like a cloth that I will wipe the brush on in between colors or the times where sometimes there gets to be too much water. It doesn't happen too often with this one. Again, if you've worked with water brushes, some of them can be so finicky. You know, it's a, you'll literally have it like it'll be too dry to use or it's like gushing water. <laughs> but anyway, um, did all the petals and then did the flower centers with a couple browns. It's just kind of habit to mix colors with these markers. I don't know. I like having, you know, the dual tones here and there. So then same thing, mixed a couple of the greens. I will have an image on my blog post of the specific colors I used. Yes, I remembered to do that. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just not paying attention. You know, I've got, I got a lot of videos on my plate, but anywho, I painted all the greenery. That was actually the most of coloring all of this because there's a lot of greenery, you know, all the leaves and stems and things. So I went through and just same thing, scribbled on those markers and then pulled the color out with my water brush. I do have my little plastic palette here on the side that I use at times for to add either more color or for little detail areas. And that's what I do with these little bees. Like I scribbled on the yellow, painted that, barely touched the black marker to these because again, the, the brush marker pearls are very, very vibrant. And when you're dealing with little tiny areas, it's pretty easy to just kind of oversaturate things. So added the black and then to paint the little teensy tiny legs there, it was easier to just scribble a little bit on my palette there and pick it up with this water brush and just quickly paint that in. 
And then I still also added a teensy tiny bit. I just used like one of the aqua colors. Scribble a little bit of that in the palette. So it's more water than the actual color to paint the wings. Just to give them that little something some. So once these were all painted, let them fully dry, which didn't take very long. And then I'm going to use the coordinating wafer dies to cut all these out. So I'm going to tape these wafer dies into place with bits of washi tape so that they don't move when I run them through my die cut machine. And I really love the wafer die set for this because it does cut out all those like center areas, which just I really like that attention to detail. <laughs> and it does some like leave creases here and there like over the image, but honestly, it doesn't bother me. It used to way back in the day, but now I'm just like, mm. I'm totally fine with it. Like I use a Spellbinders Platinum, you know, machine for die cutting and it does put a fair bit of pressure. There's ways to alleviate that, but honestly, for it to die cut all the little finicky bits for me, I'm fine with it. So anyway, I die cut everything. And then on the card base itself, I wanted to do some ink blending. So I have Simon's um, Lucky Positively Saturated Ink and sunshine positively saturated ink and some blending brushes and I'm just starting from the lower left corner with the green and then kind of blending it into the yellow trying to keep a very light hand because I like to you know slap it all on there oh, very difficult for me <laughs> to go light-handed so I went light-handed with the blending but I also am like I'm gonna cover it with splatter anyway so it doesn't matter so yeah just did a nice light blend the blend doesn't need to be perfect because again, the flower is going to go on top of this plus um, splatter. So yeah, if you're not happy with your blend or you're still struggling with blending and that sort of thing, add splatter. It, it fixes everything, really. It really does. <laughs> so once I was happy with that, um, on the inside, before I get to all the splatter, I flipped the card base over. So I have the inside of the card now. Line that up in my Misty with the same image. And then I'm going to ink it up with those same inks. So I just started with the sunshine, added a bit of the Lucky, and then I used those blending brushes just to soften it and also to blend so there's no like straight lines between the colors from the ink pads. And again, this also softens it because the blending brushes are kind of taking away some of the ink on the stamp so that this won't be too intense on the inside of the card. And then I added a little bit more of the sunshine ink because yellows can get finicky so got that done so the inside has something the main image I used thin foam squares to pop that onto my card base and then trimmed off the excess with scissors now I'm gonna add the splatter so got my little splat box stick that in there we're gonna add some perfect pearl splatter first so I got my ranger perfect pearl powder I'm gonna put a bit of this onto my palette and then I'm gonna add some water and then I'm going to use my fan brush and I'm going to add a ton of splatter. <laughs> I love it. I love Perfect Pearl Splatter. It's really pretty. And then the funny thing is, is it's actually quite subtle. It just, when the light hits it, then you really see it. But when it's not, you know, in the light, it's just like, oh, that's pretty, you know, and then the light hits it and it's like, yas. Anyway, added a bunch of that. And then I took my white gouache, added a bit of that to my palette added some water, mixed in whatever was left over, the perfect pearl liquid mixture. Just mixed it all together, why not? And then I'm gonna splatter that as well. And again, heavy hand, I'm gonna splatter a ton. Again, with the white gouache, as it's drying, it's kind of absorbing some of the color of the inks and the brush marker pros, etc. So it doesn't stay like super stark white and I'm more than okay with that. You know, I just, I want the splatter and the texture of it. It doesn't need to be, you know, bright white. So let that dry. I had heat embossed the sentiment from the same set onto some dark chocolate cardstock and I die cut it with the coordinating wafer die. Pop that into place with some foam squares, pop my little bees into place with little foam squares. I painted the bees wings with my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pen so they are sparkly. I couldn't for the life of me get it to show up on camera. More, more, most likely because I have so much shimmer and everything else going on, but it's there. You know, so their wings are sparkly. And then as a final little embellishment, I have these Trinity Stamps Cinnamon Red Hearts. Normally, I would never think to add this, but this is actually, I made this for, um, it was last week's Color Throwdown Challenge because I'm running out of time as ever, always. But that was the challenge was red, yellow, and green. And I was a little at a loss. I was like, what am I going to do for this? And then came up with this card 
And then, yeah, I was like, ooh, how can I bring in more red? And I was like, ooh, I know I have red embellishments, of course. <laughs> Multiples, all different kinds. But these little cinnamon red hearts were perfect. So I adhered those into place with dabs of craft tacky glue. Once those were adhered, I ended up pairing this card with one of Simon's metallic schoolhouse red envelopes, just to, again, bring in a little bit of the red, because I like how everything else kind of pops on that. And that finished off the card. So you can see the shimmer splatter and how, yeah, when it hits the light, how bright it gets. I tried with my flashlight to show you guys the sparkle on the bee's wings, but my camera was just not having it. It was like, new, nope. but it's there. You know, so I got splatter and some texture and the, just the colors, the colors. Love it. This was really fun to make. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll have the uh, marker colors I used. I'll have a link to the color throwdown challenge. Of course, picture links to all the supplies I used. So that will be linked directly below the video if any of you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping and commenting. I am very much appreciate all of this interaction and support. And I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye.